Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. This is a part two of um, the problem 309. And uh, pr previously, we had an intuitive attempt trying to solve the problem by breaking uh, this stock buy and sell problem into into sub problems um, by you know cutting the entire array of prices into different uh, smaller chunks but looking at you know where we had like a sh um, by looking at the specific places where we had like a temporary one day uh, price drop um, that was kind of like an intuition but but it's way more problem specific and it didn't turn out very well so um, we ended up looking at solutions and uh, trying to follow from the solutions and uh, one of the solutions was similarly using dynamic programming but the explanation was a, a little bit vague or confusing to me so I actually did it uh, did some um, learning offline now I'm prepared um, and I got some slides actually to show you my upgraded understanding of that solution and hopefully my solution is more intuitive at least to myself um, and explaining you know um, the combination of using dynamic programming and uh, uh, state machine to uh, basically um, decompose this problem and uh, solve it using dynamic programming all right so let's uh, take a look now this is the solution that we were looking at and uh, so let me just remind you what we're doing here we were doing uh, we we're doing the uh, uh, best time to buy and sell stock with a cooldown so unlike the previous buy and sell stock problems now we have to actually go through a day of cooldown which is like doing nothing and wait until we can buy again on the next day uh, so so then we looked at solutions and uh, this approach one dynamic programming with state machine was the one we looked at and uh, you know although these state transitions were kind of making sense you know this this table of you know deriving things was a bit confusing to me uh, but then I just you know uh, thought about it offline and now I think uh, I figured it out so I'm gonna share with you what is my understanding of what this is okay so now let me now um, switch to my uh, own slides that I prepared for this prepared for this uh, for this problem all right so if you remember we had a uh, example one where we had uh, a five-day uh, stock price list uh, one two three zero two right and uh, we start basically from day zero and and we can and we can basically either buy or just you know you know wait right and um, and this is like the three states that I'm uh, defining actually let me start by defining I'm, I'm gonna just make a brand new slide and start um, showing you guys what I mean by these three states right so I'm going to actually go here and make stuff on the go. We have empty, we have frozen, we have holding. Those are the three states that we have, right? And now let me just make them a little larger. Not really. Okay. Let's just do it like this. So when we're empty, of course, we can uh, uh, we can we can go from empty to holding by yeah the color is fine by by what by by buying right so this action here would be called buying so if we buy we go to holding uh, and if we s stay in empty like we don't do anything while we're empty uh, oops yeah something like that or something like this yeah that is when we're like uh, not doing anything right so it's like uh, uh, hold or you know rest right um, and while we are holding we can actually still keep holding so 
once we're in holding, what we can do is that we can keep holding. Keep holding the stuff, right? Hey, this is better. I wish I could add more points here. Uh, how do you do that, actually? Add more points. Uh, uh, mm -mm, form a shape. I don't know. I don't know how you add points to it. Alt, Shift, Control. Doesn't really work. Okay, all right, fine. Um, then we're just going to say that if we rest, we're going to stay in holding. But also we can go from holding to frozen by, by selling, right? So if we have a sell action instead, um, we can go from holding to frozen. Uh, so we have a one day freeze, right? And after our one day freeze, we'll definitely go into empty, right? Yeah, we'll definitely go into empty. Uh, let me just, yeah, put something there. We'll definitely go into empty and that is by the action of uh, uh, rest. We just wait, right? Basically, you just rest and uh, you will go into empty. Actually, you know what? Let me just put this here. It's a little weird looking that way. But anyway, this is what we have right now. Okay, like this maybe. Let me just make things a little bit. Uh, normal. Yep, this looks better. Right, so this is our basically our state transition. Uh, so now let's go back into presentation mode and because uh, this looks better, right? We have the state transition like this. So we have three states and we have basically three types of actions, rest, buy, and sell. Um, and they're not like totally symmetric. For example, you cannot stay in frozen state. All right, so now let's switch to this uh, tabular view where uh, we can be switching among these three states, but we're also looking at the state on each day specifically. And we're basically uh, comparing that against the price for each day so that it's easier for us to calculate what's happening. Uh, anyways, um, so um, if we just look at it this way, we, we can solve this by uh, so-called dynamic programming in a forward direction. It's, um, but you know what? When, when, when actually when I was like learning about dynamic programming, you know, in a, in terms of a theory, uh, people, uh, I always uh, uh, learned it as like a backward direction algorithm. Uh, I'll explain that difference in a bit, but let's just you know stick with the forward direction, which is more suitable and intuitive to this pro, uh, to this stock buying and selling problem, and then we'll, I'll show how it could be generalized or equivalent to uh, the more usual traditional backward DP uh, uh, in that form. So now let me just start on this and. Uh, because I'm now going to start some editing, I'm just going to switch to this editing mode, right? And what are we do? What are we looking at here? So, if we compare what we had before in this transition, uh, for among the states, and, and we look at it here, um, let's start from day zero, and because we're going forward, we're going to basically examine what is possible and what is not on day zero. Okay? Um, for example. Let's see if, if on day zero it, it's possible to just stay empty. Uh, yes, of course we can, right? And uh, is it possible to be holding on day zero? No, because holding means that you already have some stocks. If you don't have any stocks, it does not it does not qualify as holding. So let's be you know actually more specific uh, on that. So this empty leg has stock. You know this is like no stock, right? When you're empty, of course, that means you have no stock. Uh, let me use a different font. Maybe let's use yellow. Yep. So that means you have no stock. If you're holding, of course, 
you know, you definitely have stock, right? Uh, but when you're frozen, of course, that means you have no stock as well because you just sold something, so you have no stock. Uh, therefore, at the beginning of the um, day one, because because we haven't we haven't bought anything yet, um, uh, so um, we cannot be in holding position. So I'm just gonna put an put an X here, meaning that it's impossible. Also, we cannot be frozen because frozen uh, only happens after selling, right? So I'm not gonna say this is a frozen stay because this is literally just day one. We haven't sold. We haven't sold anything yet. So the only possibility is to stay in a empty state, right? And then and then that's it. And we're gonna move on to day day one using zero indexing, right? Because in zero indexing, the first day is day zero and the second day is day one. All right. So on day one, let's see what can happen. Um, well, on day one, we we also I mean. Uh, let me just put down something here as well. You know, we use we're gonna use we're also gonna track our cash, right? Track our cash at each day. You know, at each on each day, on each day. Yeah. Uh, you know, before action, before any before any action, before taking action, right? So here is here is what it is. On each day, uh, we can take an action. Either we we hold or we sell or we you know buy, right? But there's definitely like an amount of cash in the morning, you know, before the market, uh, like just when the market you know uh, starts or even before the market starts, you're gonna have a certain amount of cash in your hand, and we're gonna track that. We're gonna use that number and we're gonna write that number into. Um, into the circles here. So on day zero, you can buy. Um, oh, that's. You can buy. Uh, you can also. Um, uh, let me just actually make the text black. That way, yeah, you can see them. Uh, on day zero, whether you you try to buy uh, the stock at price one or not, um, before you take any action, your value is at zero, right? So we're gonna write our zero there, um, and actually, I'm gonna uh, make a modification to that. Say, track our maximum possible cash each day before taking action, and that when we use the the keyword maximum, this is where you know dynamic programming comes in, and we will find that sense will make sense as we go on. All right, just so just now, trust me. We're gonna use this number to represent our maximum possible cash uh, each day before taking taking the taking the action on that day. So this is gonna be uh, definitely zero, right? Because on day zero, whether we buy or not, you know, uh, in the morning we we're gonna have zero asset. Um, well, then on day on day one, on day one, let's take a look at this empty state. Is it possible that we are uh, gonna be empty on day one? Yeah, of course. So why is that possible? We're gonna start using some arrows to to draw why it's possible. Because if we didn't buy anything on day one, on day zero, and uh, we just you know don't do anything and just rest, we're gonna have a value of zero uh, on uh, in state empty on day one. Uh, but there is another possibility because if you look at our transition, um, like state, uh, 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 state machine here, another way to uh, go to empty, if is if we were frozen previously, right? But is it possible that we were frozen previously? Well, um, you know what? Because this is impossible. So you know, although theoretically it's possible, but in in, in reality, because we couldn't be in the frozen state on day zero, so this is like impossible. So the only value that you know this value uh, can take is, is value zero. Okay, let's move on to holding. So we ask ourselves, um, is it possible to be holding 
uh, a stock on day two, on day one, sorry, on day one. Yeah, it's possible if we had purchased the stock, you know, before day one, right? Um, so that is possible. And we're going to just start drawing the line. So um, it's possible if, if we were like previously holding, right? But because this is impossible, like we cannot be holding on day zero. So this arrow is now just no meaningless. But there's another possibility. If we just bought the stock on day zero uh, as, uh, as the action on day zero, then we would have acquired a stock uh, at the price of one uh, on day zero. And now in day one, we will be holding. And uh, what is the value? What is the cash value we have right now? Well, if we're, if we're not if we're not selling anything, then uh, we are still gonna have um, uh, be well because we have spent. You know, if you buy something, now you all you have is stock, right? But your cash drops, so actually it's gonna be minus one here. Why? Because you need to spend some investment in order to to obtain the stock, right? So on day one, you're gonna have one stock, but then your cash flow is minus one. So that makes sense. Okay, so that's all the all the ways that you can uh, be holding on day two. Let's take a look at frozen. Is it possible that we are frozen on uh, on day one? Well, uh, in order to be frozen, the previous day has to be a selling action. And for the previous day to be a selling action, the previous day itself has to be in the holding state because it's only in holding state where we actually have a stock. If you look back here, uh, right? Holding state uh, is only possible if you already have stock um, uh, before before that date, right? So we have to be in the holding state. So it's going to be like this and this. But since this previous holding state on day zero is impossible, so we're going to call we're gonna call this as X, which means you know it's an it's an impossible state, it's an unachievable state. Uh, anyways, right? So uh, let's move on to day two then. So on day two, again we start asking ourselves, is it possible to be in empty state on day two? Well, it's of course possible because what you can do is that you can basically uh, um, inherit inherit the the empty state like you don't buy anything uh on, you you don't hold anything on day one so you can continue to hold nothing on day two uh, and that is going to give you um a cash value of zero since you have not bought anything um your your, your cash is uh, at neutral value uh another way to stay to to be in empty state uh, is if you had uh, excuse me, if, if uh, you had sold something on the previous day, which means that you will be, uh, no, you have sold something on the day before yesterday. So then you had, because, you, you know, there's a cool down requirement, right? So that means like, um, if on day one, we had, it, we were like in frozen state, then on day day two, we could be in empty state. But since this state, you know, we have we have shown before that it's impossible to be in frozen state uh, on day one. So basically, this line does not provide any uh, alternative values for 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 this empty state. Whoops, this empty state on day two. So that's all possibilities for empty state on day two. Let's move on to holding state on day two. So is it possible to be holding on day two? Well, um, in order to be holding, there are two possibilities. The first possibility is that uh, yesterday we didn't have it, didn't have anything, and yesterday we actually bought something. Um, so there's that possibility. So if that's the case, uh, so on day on day one we bought a stock uh, at a price of two. So then our net cash is going to be net cash flow or our, our net cash amount is going to be minus two because 
uh, that buy that buying action uh, on day one has cost us, you know, two two dollars. So we're at minus two. But there's another possibility, right? If we had bought actually previously uh, on day zero and we were holding it on day one, then we can actually, um, you know, have a net cash value of minus one. And uh, here is where the maximum, you know, here is where the uh, the maximum thing comes in because um, in the end we want to, you know, maximize our kind of like rolling uh, cash on our, our, our rolling, ca you know, our, our our net cash gain in the end. Uh, we always want to maximize our cash um, amount uh, at any state. So we're going to inherit uh, this cash amount from uh, holding uh, uh, on day one. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do that because because now minus one is greater than minus two, so we take minus one value here. So again, the reason of you know taking a maximum is that you know um, all the actions forward can can you know can can be um, forward in the future can can be something that we decide later on, and we're just you know look looking back to see what is the you know. Uh, the maximum rolling uh, net cash uh, at any state uh, on a particular date, and that is what we're looking for. Like we're trying to build the maximum uh, uh, cash history. We're trying to build our maximum cash history. So let me just write that down here, just if it makes more sense. You know, we build uh, uh, we build our maximum cash history. His, uh, history, history. Yeah, this is what we're doing here. We're building, we're building our maximum uh, cash history. That's what we're aiming to do here. So, our maximum cash history here is now, now minus one. Now let's take a look at the third one here. Uh, frozen. Is it possible to be frozen on day two? Well, um, we could because if we want to be frozen on day two that means we must be selling something on day one and it's possible because uh, this holding state for day one is possible right so uh, what's the value here um, so uh, at the holding state on day one we had a, a net cash value of minus one but since we sell uh, uh, we take the selling action on day one. That's going to correspond to a price of two dollars. So we're gonna have we will have we will obtain like a two dollar uh, selling reward, and uh, minus that you know uh, one dollar uh, um, cost price, uh, our our um, total net cash uh, value is at one here. So one equals to two minus one, right? So our uh, net cash value is at one here. So that's for day two. Now we're going to repeat this um, process uh, onward and take a look at now what is the uh, uh, maximum possible cash value, uh, just cash, right, uh, uh, at the uh, empty state on day three. So one, there are two ways to achieve an empty state on day three. Number one is if we were in empty state in day Two, and that will give us a continued value of zero. Another way to achieve empty state on day three is if we were frozen on day two after selling something on day one, right? So uh, if that's the case, well, because the frozen action uh, during the frozen day, you basically just rest and do nothing. You, you don't have any change in your cash value you just copy this value here and since this value is one is greater than zero we take the maximum like we uh, like we specified here uh, we are going to use one here so that is the value for the empty state on day three now okay we move on to um, holding the value the cash value of a uh, holding state on day three and what are the possibilities well there are again two possibilities Possibility one is if we were empty and we bought uh, something actually 
uh, on the previous day. So that means we bought uh, one stock at the price of three dollars uh, on day two. So uh, today, what do we have? Well, we have minus three dollars because we had like a deficit. Now we just turned our three dollars into one stock. Um, and one other way is if we just hold if we held on to our existing stock from uh, a previous purchase in that case uh, we just directly copied the uh, the cash value uh, from the holding state from the previous date and that is minus one and now because minus one is greater than minus three we're gonna use minus one here all right so we just uh, calculated the holding state value on day three now let's move in now let's move on to the frozen state value on day three. Is it possible to be holding, to be like in frozen state on day three? Yeah, it's possible. That means we were selling on day two. And we could because on day two, we, we could be owning the stock. Um, and let's take a look at the selling value on day two. It was $3. So we had a minus one cash, net cash. Uh, amount and now we sell it we sold it uh, at three dollars so now three minus one equals to two now we had a uh, now we have a net cash value of two dollars here in this frozen state on day three all right so now let's move on to the final day day four for empty state again uh, we're gonna take a look at these two possibilities the first one is just uh, keep holding uh, keep uh, resting and uh, uh, keep ourselves in the empty state and the values of course wait it's not zero uh, sorry about that it should be one we just inherit that value of one from the previous day right uh, and then one other possibility is if we uh, we were in the we were in like the freezing state uh, previously uh, and because uh, you know spending the frozen state spending the uh, the time you know in the frozen day, doesn't really gain us any cash. We're just gonna copy the cash value here. And because two is greater than the one here, we're gonna take two as the value for empty state here. And for the holding value, there are of course, again, two different values, two different possibilities. The first one is that if we bought something on day three, uh, and on day three, the, the stock is almost free. It is indeed free. So uh, we do not have a drop in cash. And in addition, we now have one stock. Uh, so our cash value is one, and then um, what about our? Uh, what if we hold on to you know the previously owned cash uh, stock? Then we will have a, a value of minus one. But since minus one is less than one, we we still take the the one value uh, by you know buying a stock for free from day three. All right, what is the value of frozen state on the last day? Well, if it's frozen state, that means we just sold something uh, um, uh, yesterday, so on day three. So let's represent that with this arrow here. And if that's the case, what is the selling value? Well, unfortunately, if we've sold the uh, the stock on day three, that's the the you know the worst thing that you can do. You, you're just giving away your stock for free. So you're still gonna have a deficit of minus one. All right, so is this the end? Uh, we're looking at, you know, a net cash value of two, one, and minus one here. Can we say this is the end of it? No, not really, because you know what? In, remember, in holding state, we, we are still holding one stock here, right? Um, but, but you know, um, what we can do, we can still take one action on day four, right? Uh, remember, we can still take that action. So let's actually... Um, uh, uh, um, I guess what we what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, use a uh, let's change this color of this uh, filling change the filling color here. We're gonna use a yellow as like the final value. Okay, so our final value for uh, being in the uh, being in the uh, empty state on day four is still two because we don't hold any stocks um, but if we were in like if we were in the holding state on day four 
then at the end of the day you know you know this is like day four end of day let me just say that you know just to explain it a little bit more intuitively day four end of the day you can you can do like a plus two here because because why because because you have still one stock and you can still sell that stock on that day uh, and then basically clear it right after the clearing you're gonna have a value of three um, and then what about what about the other one here you're just gonna do minus one because uh, if you were frozen you know at the end of the day you're still maybe you're still at the same value the next day you are free but at the end of the day you still have the same amount of money so this is our obvious uh, champion here so I'm just gonna uh, surround it by a uh, by a green thick green edge to say okay this is our optimal solution right um, because at the end of the day on day four we have three dollars and what are the and what are the states that leads to it well we can now backtrack uh, it's uh, it's gonna be this as well right and uh, let me just make it thick it's gonna be this as um, it's gonna be this this state right um, make it thick it's gonna be this state um, yeah that's how we uh, we went to that state right uh, uh, yes uh, and and then it's gonna be uh, this state let me just you know give it an outline make it thicker uh, and then it's gonna be this state right because these are the actions that are leading to the optimal value there so we're gonna just highlight it there here we go here we go uh, and why, why was that because because you know um, for all these possible actions you know actually there was like a preferred action at each uh, um, at each um, leading leading to each state we, we should have like recorded that so, so actually let's let's run that again right let's run it over again um, because we wanted to record it so for day zero it was basically like that for day one uh, what what's the action that you know lead to the value zero here it was this so I'm going to actually um, make make this thicker okay make this uh, like yeah three pound thick uh, and then for this one of course it was this action that led to the uh, uh, this so we're gonna just use the format painter to highlight, and then for this this one, uh, uh, well, it was this, but then I mean it's it's a, a infeasible, impossible state, and for day two empty, uh, the value at least to empty is this one here. So hey, format paint, uh, format paint this. We're going to, again, format paint. Now, for holding state on day two, uh, how, how did we get here? We get here by, you know, holding it for this state, for the frozen state, in order to get value of one, well, we were selling on day two, right? And then uh, for day three, uh, to get the value of one, we were actually taking this, uh, uh, this line here, and then for for this holding state on day three to achieve minus one, we were what we were doing. We were actually uh, just still resting. Um, for this frozen state here to achieve the value of two, we were actually selling, right? And uh, for day on day four, in order to achieve number of two here, we were doing the uh, we were doing the uh, the yeah. Um, the resting after the frozen state and then for to achieve number of one here uh, we were basically getting free stock on day three um, and for the last one here because this is the only way you can go that's it uh, right so now what are these thick arrows right so let me just uh, write that down um, the thick arrows 
the thick arrows. The thick arrows mean optimal uh, decision, right? Optimal decision. Optimal decision uh, at each state. Um, or actually leading to leading to each state, right? Leading to each state. For example, yeah, the, the optimal decision that led to this state having a, a value of minus one is is this arrow. So yeah, uh, so that is why when we have selected our um, best value at the end of day four, we can just you know backtrack these thick arrows to find our trajectory and uh, you know basically find out our decisions. So this is uh, this is like um, how using dynamic programming in a forward direction we can solve our problems. And I'm going to show you actually the equation that um, that represents it. Uh, so the equation that represents it is the one uh, on top. So you have you have a g of x k j. Well, what does it mean? The symbol g uh, is a function symbol. Uh, this function is the maximum um, is the maximum cash value uh, uh, given the state in the bracket, right? The maximum cash value uh, that you can accumulate up to this point um, given the state inside the bracket. And what is the state? Well x um, x of k and j um, what what this means is uh, so x of k um, it is k is like the, the, the day index or the uh, is it uh, no nah, not really okay x k is like uh, hold on a second. Yeah, so k is the time index. In our case, we have like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the time index. And j, um, j is the actual state index. We have three states. So j could be 0, 1, 2, uh, you know, depending on how we define our states. So uh, the k index is our time index. The j index is our discrete state index. Uh, for example, if we have like k0, j0, and if our 0 means um, um, uh, means the state of um, empty, then that means, okay, uh, at day 0, we are empty. So that's what k0, 0 would mean. So anyway, this g function, which is the maximum uh, cash value uh, of, of the corresponding state, it could be, we can express this as um, a recursive relationship, and it depends on um, uh, it depends on the uh, on these following things, right? Um, first, um, it's a maximum, like overall, it's a maximum function, uh, and uh, the iterator is, uh, let's say, uh, the iterator is. Uh, you know the state we were like a day before right so k minus 1 means this is like a day before and I is uh, you know the kind of like the state that we were uh, from from yesterday so then uh, so in this bracket we have two compa uh, two parts the first part is a uh, arc reward so what does arc reward means? It's the uh, the reward of you know uh, of of performing an action uh, of performing an action on a previous day. So for example, if on day k minus one you sold a stock uh, and then you landed at uh, this maybe uh, frozen state uh, on the current day, then your arc reward is going to be uh you know uh whatever the the stock value was on yesterday so this is the arc reward and uh, let's make another example if we were holding um if we took like resting uh as the action yesterday then the arc 
reward is of course zero like if you don't buy or don't sell then of course you're not getting cash or losing cash at all so that's what arc reward means and then plus um this uh this, this is the same function uh symbol plus the maximum cash reward value uh, uh on a day before right so on day k minus one uh at the state i so again i could take three values zero one two representing the uh empty state the holding state and the frozen state so basically um this is like the uh kind of like the uh, recursive relationship for your dynamic programming uh but it is somehow in a, like a forward direction in the sense that you were relying on uh, a previous day information to calculate the current day information so you're basically going forward in time uh while you were like while you calculate this thing this um these rewards and uh, uh in a recursive manner uh and this g we can say that you know it represents the rolling reward in the past uh you know up to the state uh 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 x k minus one i uh yesterday so this is the forward direction but you know this is not how normally people formulate dynamic programming and the backward direction is is actually how people formulate dynamic programming recursive relations uh, which is the one below I'm going to show you next um, how we could solve the same problem actually in the in the nominal uh, representation of a dynamic programming done in the backward direction. So I have a slide for that. Let's uh, let's take a look and see how we solve this same problem, uh, but flipping the direction so that you know uh, this DP problem. It's going to be your textbook DP problem. And you, if you have learned dynamic programming somewhere uh, in this manner, you will immediately recognize it. So now let's get into it. Uh, first, let's uh, take a look. What's the difference? Um, if you go back to our forward direction, you, you notice that we, um, we list the days um, in an ascending order, day zero all, all the way to day four. And our price, of course, is accordingly uh, in the in the correct, um, you know, uh, time forward um, order. But now, when we solve this in the backward direction, we actually we actually flipped uh, the order of um, of the days, and now day four is the first one, and day zero is at the end. The reason for this is that you know, in order to apply uh, trans or transform. Uh, this stock buy this stock buy and selling problem into a standard dynamic programming form uh, in the backward direction. We, this is what we had to do, uh, and I will explain in the very end uh, why we have to do so, and uh, and and that will basically explain maybe uh, your your question now. I, I think you might have that question now, like why do we have to do this in backward? Uh, how why do we have to flip the days? So now let's just uh, uh, take this problem as a standard uh, dynamic programming problem uh, in which now let me just show you the formulation here uh, in which this is how it uh, how it works so in a dynamic programming problem uh, you could either be like minimizing an overall cost during a during a process or you can be like maximizing your overall gain in a process in this case we're maximizing like a gain so we're using the max uh, symbol here and uh, now this G here it has a different meaning uh, the G what it means here is that it means um, the maximum uh, the maximum reward uh, uh, you can get onward right like from now on all the way to the last day uh, uh, let me just actually write that down because this is important. Let me uh, yeah, put another label here, right? This is like the maximum maximum reward onward. Maximum reward onward uh, from current uh, from current state and time. 
yeah so this is what this uh this g means and uh let's just let's just do it that way make it uh white uh well previously our g when we were defining our problem in a forward direction it meant um our maximum reward uh our maximum reward uh uh you know, maximum rolling reward so far. Uh, uh, um, at this current state and time, right? So these are these are different, slightly different, but you know, in fact, they mean quite different things. Previously, the maximum rolling reward so far at this current state and time um, is the accumulation from all previous histories, right? Up to this time. And when, you know, in the standard uh, dynamic programming backward direction, what we would like to uh, 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 calculate is the maximum reward onward in the future uh, uh, from the current state and time on. Like, if you land at this state, you will be certain that, you know, the best thing you can do in the future uh, until you die or until at the end of the game is is that much and and, you, you, and that's it like like there's a limited future I mean there's a limited future of gains that you can you can you can achieve and um, basically the, that's that's your that's your cap that's your ceiling that's your cap right um, so it's like okay it's, it's it's not very exciting but you know it's a certain thing that you that you can uh, rest a certain um, that you know if you're at that state, uh, then the G value at that state is the maximum amount of reward you can ever get. You can ever 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 get moving onward if you don't screw up, or actually if you if you if you perform your best. Yeah, that's that's what it means uh, uh, to be the G or the maximum reward onward from the current state and time in the standard. Uh, DP backward direction definition, whereas previously this you know variant, this actual variant, this forward direction variant, yeah, let's just actually call it variant, forward direction variant. In this variant, um, our G was defined as the maximum rolling reward so far at this current state and time. So it's like the wealth or the money we have accumulated so far if we're in this state at this current time. And the future, we don't know. In the future could be sad, it could be really awesome, but we just don't know, right? So that's why I say that you know to compare these two um, directions, you can you know casually just compare it as investment versus work. You know, in the world in the world of working, you you know like you know if you work hard at the end of the year, you're you're gonna get X amount of salary. And uh, if you work very hard and you get promotion all the time uh, until the day you retire, there's like a there's like a cap, right? There's like a maximum amount of money you can make by working very hard, making all the right decisions, uh, you know, uh, uh, work your relations with your supervisor and whatnot. You know, do your best at work. Uh, that's the maximum amount of reward you're gonna get um, uh, uh, until you retire, right? Or until you die. Uh, so. This is like the conventional dynamic programming uh, perspective. Actually, why not? Let's just, you know, call it the work perspective of dynamic programming, right? So yeah, work perspective. Perspective. That's a first. Okay, that's that's my invention now. Now it's official. We're gonna we're gonna call it work perspective DP. Uh, and then this. This, this forward direction variant is actually the invest perspective of DP. So yeah, so this is where you are like kind of like your own boss with your own money, uh, and uh, you're you're looking at you know what is the maximum reward I have at this current step, and uh, uh, the future is something. Um, the future is something uncertain and we have to you know uh, recursively calculate to 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 basically to find out the answer 
Whereas, you know, in the work perspective DP, you know, you, you kind of like start with the maximum answer or like the uh, the best result already. And then you just calculate backward till the current time. Uh, and basically your uh, objective is to, you know, to not screw up uh, that best reward that you kind of already knew ahead. Um, but then in this forward direction, uh, if you're making rewards, then you always start looking at, you know, what's the current, uh, what's the current rolling reward and what are the actions, you know, in the future that can, they can, you could build up my, uh, asset and build up my, uh, maximum reward onward. So, yeah, so this is how I can best explain, um, this new variant of forward direction and backward direction. Um, okay. So back to, back to, you know, I'm going to walk you, walk you through this uh, uh, expression uh, a little bit. So in the traditional or conventional dynamic programming expression, uh, if we're talking about rewards, then the reward at any uh, time uh, or any day K uh, uh, within the state I is going to be um, the maximum of all possible combinations of arc rewards and, uh, uh, you know, Maximum onward rewards. I'm gonna remain this uh, onward reward, right? In the future, uh, rolling reward, onward reward. Yeah. So, um, max reward. Yeah. Let's call it uh, onward reward or best reward. Oh, how should we call it? Best reward in the future. You know, just onward reward. Okay. Onward reward. Right. Uh, the best onward reward uh, from uh, a next state uh, on the next day uh, plus the arc reward by taking certain actions uh, uh, on the current day, which leads to uh, the state J on the next day uh, on day K plus one. So in principle, these two are the same. I mean, if you flick, flip the time direction, uh, uh, one expression becomes the other. So um, it's just that the backward direction expression is more popular is, and it's how Bellman, I think back in the 1950s when he invented this algorithm of uh, uh, Bellman's principle of optimality uh, came up with. So this, has become, this becomes like the uh, established expression of dynamic programming. And now we're going to solve the same problem now uh, in in that fashion so now okay with all that explained now let's look at the problem again we have uh reversed the dates and then we're going to basically change our perspective and think of the reward in a different way now we're looking at uh the uh, maximum reward onward from a current state and time and we're going to start from the the last state and uh, so on this empty state on day zero we're going to basically ask ourselves Right, what is the um, maximum onward reward? Now onward means looking back, right? Because now time has been flipped. So onward means, you know, going going to the right. But there's no more um, days to the right. So, uh, so it's gonna be actually uh, empty. So we'll be at zero. Well, let me actually now do a little bit of a change here. Make the text color black, yep. So it's gonna be zero. And for holding, uh, it, first let's check if, if this possible, if this uh, state is valid. Um, if this is like in holding state, then, um, um, then you know, a day before, right? Onward, which in other, uh, in, uh, in other words, a day before or yesterday, we must be having some stock, but that is impossible, right? right? This is like the initial day already. And a yesterday, we couldn't be owning any stock yesterday. So this state is um, uh, is impossible. Uh, same thing with the frozen state, because in order for the frozen state to be possible, uh, then yesterday we must be selling, but there's no yesterday after this, right? This is it, it literally the initial day. So, all right, we have zero X and X. So moving on to day one, uh, is it possible to be in empty state? 
well, uh, if we want to be an empty state, that must mean that we um, uh, uh, we either were empty yesterday or uh, we were in frozen yesterday. So those are the two possible um, possible scenarios, and we actually want to, you know draw these arrows now in this direction because it's almost as if we're, we're making a decision and we're going to land at a state. Um, although the decision was actually made yesterday, now we, we, we inverse the problem, uh, we inverted the problem and now we, we want the arrow to kind of like um, now in the reverse direction as well. So these are the two possible uh, uh, scenarios. Uh, and uh, because this scenario is impossible, so the only scenario possible is going from empty from yesterday to empty today. And so we're going to assign again zero here. And holding on day one, well, uh, there are two options, right? Again, uh, if we were holding yesterday, like this arrow, if we were holding yesterday, then we, today we can just stay rested and uh, uh, keep holding. But this is impossible, right? We put an X here, but another possibility is if we were um, empty yesterday and we actually bought something yesterday. So this is the arrow and it's possible and we need a cash value of one to buy that stock. So right now our maximum onward reward is going to be uh, minus one in this case. Is it possible to be frozen? Well, um, the only way it's possible is if we've sold something um, yesterday. But since uh, on day zero, we couldn't be holding, there's nothing to sell. So this is basically impossible. We're going to put an X here. All right, day two. Day two, uh, empty state. Again, it's possible. Uh, there's two possibilities. One is like we keep, keep um, resting and uh, uh, by, by holding nothing. And this will give us a continued value of zero, or the other possibility is if we've sold something uh, on day one, and that is uh, infeasible. So we basically just have this one value here. For um, the holding state, uh, is it possible? Well, it is. Uh, we could either just keep holding, and then we just uh, use the same value, uh, same maximum um, onward reward of minus one here, or we could be uh, buying something uh, yesterday, uh, and that would give us a value of minus two because the price yesterday was minus two. But then minus two is less than minus one, so we still take minus one here. What about this frozen state? Well, uh, if we want to be frozen on day two, then on day one we must be selling. So that's the only possible way that this can go. Uh, and uh, what is the maximum uh, reward onward? Well, um, you have to take uh, um, the stock as being like already sold. And so uh, the onward value is going to be 1 because uh, there's a minus 1 uh, net cash amount. But then because uh, a selling action was uh, performed on day 1, uh, so actually moving onward, you're going to have uh, a value of 1 here. So now let's move on to day three. Day three for empty, there's again two possibilities. One is just you know keep resting and uh, we keep the value of zero, or uh, we could be uh, we could be uh, coming from like a frozen state uh, yesterday, and uh, because frozen state is not going to change anything in terms of cash amount, so we actually would have one dollar cash instead uh, for empty as the maximum onward reward. So we'll take one there. For holding, again, there's two possibilities. One is that we continue to hold. Uh, the other one is if we uh, bought something, is if we bought something on day two. So if we continue to hold, that's going to give us a continued value of minus one for holding. But if we bought something on day two, that would cost us $3. And plus the existing cash value of zero, that's going to be minus three. It's going to be less than minus one, so we take minus one instead. For frozen state on day three, there's only one possibility that is uh, we sold something on day uh, we sold something on on day two 
because the price was good, $3, uh, with the existing cash uh, amount of minus 1, we will get a value of 2 here. Now let's move on to day 4, the last day. Uh, again, for empty, there's uh, one possibility of just you know staying with that uh, empty, uh, empty value uh, on day 3, which is 1. Uh, or we could uh, be selling on day three, which was really a bad choice because you would be like uh, basically giving your giving your stock away. But you know what? Um, because this is a pretty high value. Even if we just you know sold our 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 stock for free on day three, following this, uh, we would still have like a value of two. So it's not that bad, but uh, can we be holding on the last day? Yeah, we could. And uh, one possibility is that we just continue to hold what we already had uh, with that one stock, or we could be, you know, selling something on day three, which was uh, which was pretty bad, right? Like if we were selling on day three. Uh, if we were selling on day three, then um, sorry, buying. Ah, I'm sorry, buying, but not selling. Buying. Uh, because now day three, if we were buying at a zero value, we basically got a free stock, and we're gonna inherit that uh, cash value of one. So it's a pretty good scenario here. We have one stock, and uh, we also have some cash. And frozen. Uh, for uh, day four to be frozen, we had to be selling on um, on day three, right? And that was a pretty bad choice because uh, we gave that uh, out for free. Well, I was wrong about you know this line here. Let me just redo this line. So for um, for this for this day four to be empty, the second alternative was to just stay idle during a cool down on day three. And we basically don't have any change in our um, in our cash value. So that's why this uh, highest value here was two. So I just corrected what I just said. Uh, all right, so we now have the full list, but is this everything? Well, not really, right? Because again, we need to, on the last day, we need to clear, we need to clear our, our value. Like we might still have some stock here, right? So we're gonna do day four. Day four, uh, end of day, clearing, right? Day four clearing uh, at the end of the day. We're going to do that, and uh, let's take a look at uh, the value here. Let's just use a link to represent that. And this will be two because we, w we don't have any stock on day four. Uh, but what about this holding option here? Because we still hold some stock, um, we're gonna actually clear that on day on on day four at the end of the day. So this will lead to three because we had a uh, a plus two here, right? A plus two in this direction. Uh, and uh, what if we were frozen? Well, if we were frozen, then there's no change in the uh, cash value because the only thing we can do is to you know rest it, rest for the entire day, so we're going to have a value of minus one. So this is now pretty obvious. Uh, this is the better choice. Oh, by the way, we, we again forgot to add the uh, arrow that uh, that indicate the best action uh, from any state onward. So let's redo that again. So um, for the day zero, of course, uh, there's no more further action. Uh, so we didn't have to do anything like that. But for this day one, the optimal action is actually taking this one. So we'll make this sticker, right? Make this sticker by painting it uh, with three pounds. And then for this uh, next state, the best thing to do is to again uh, buy, start buying some stock. And then for this one, since this is the only action possible, uh, we're gonna give it, yeah. Uh, a thick line arrow. On day two, the best value, uh, the best option, the best control action, or the best action is still like uh, stay rested, right? 
and for this minus one here, uh, um, it is when we uh, inherit. Like we just keep. We j if we just keep um, uh, keep resting, right? And for this one here, it is achieved by selling the stock uh, we bought yesterday. Now. Uh, on day three, this one here is by following just you know resting uh, on day two, uh, and then the for for the holding state on day three, the value is achieved by you know keep resting, and for frozen on day three, this is the only action. Uh, for for empty on day four. Uh, the best value was obtained by uh, uh, resting after the frozen state. Uh, for holding state on day four, this was achieved by uh, by buying that free stock. Uh, then for frozen state on day four, the best action. Well, it's the only action here. So all right, we just built our again, you know, optimal control action mapping. Some some call it the optimal control law. Basically, it means the optimal action to take at any given state. So it, indeed, uh, if you look up any state here, it's going to have one um, you know thickened arrow that indicates where to go next. And in the way, in a way, we could just l take a look at what's the maximum value at the beginning, and then we're going to just follow these uh, thick arrows to um, to find our op uh, our optimal trajectory so that is how I'm going to do this um, and we're again highlighting the uh, optimal trajectory here um, right and then uh, this one will just outline and give it the thick outline uh, next one will be this one here with the thick outline the next state is frozen uh, so we're gonna highlight that with the thick outline the next state is um, uh, 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 holding. Well, we should say the previous state, like the previous state state holding. And then on day zero, we should be empty because that's the only thing possible. All right, so this is the optimal trajectory and uh, our dynamic programming solution as if we were doing it in the backward direction, which was the standard direction that DP was first defined for. All right, so uh, that's it, guys. Let me just uh, you know give you a summary of what we just went through. We went through uh, the problem formulation um, of this stock buy and sell with a cool down problem, uh, first with its uh, state machine, uh, but uh, it's a slightly modified state machine than the uh, leak code answer because I think my definition is more intuitive. We have an empty state, uh, which means that we don't hold any stock. Uh, we also have a holding state, which means that we're having a stock. And uh, we also have a frozen state that is basically a one-time state after uh, we sell uh, a stock and we're just going to sit in that state for a day. And it's a state with no stock in our pocket. And then... Um, after the frozen date, you know, uh, uh, which we rest uh, through the entire day, then the next day we are empty again and we are able to buy or, you know, rest uh, just or, or, or idling. Uh, also, like when we were holding, we were we, we are still given the option to, you know, rest and, you know, keep uh, in the holding state. So this is the state machine. Uh, and then next we moved on to formalizing this problem in a forward unconventional uh, dynamic programming uh, as a former as a forward dynamic programming problem and uh, our intuition was basically that we want to build our maximum cash history uh, from day zero uh, and uh, the value that we're assigning in each of these uh, state uh, circles uh, represent the maximum possible cash each day before taking any action uh, and then we just basically perform such uh, calculations step by step onward and until the end of the day. And then, of course, uh, on day four, it's because it's a special day, it's the last day, we will have another uh, day four end of the day clearing where we, we're going to you know, clear any um, holding stock. 
and change it into cash and then just compare the cash value at the end of day four and find our champion and work our way back to find the uh, optimum uh, choices and trajectory uh, if we want to i mean if if the if all this is about is just to find a value then we don't need to you know uh look up those things anymore uh and then of course this is the most textbook correct dynamic programming way of formulating this problem and it would have to require a a reversion uh an inversion of the time direction because you because you can see we're actually starting from day four and then you know ending at day zero uh that is unfortunately the case because because this is like finally this is the something that i would like to say to wrap up the theory part of this is that in the standard dynamic programming formulation which is the backward direction formulation your reward has to be a reward um uh, uh in the type of onward reward in the future right um it cannot be like the rolling reward type uh, which was like all the reward that you've accumulated so far in the past it has to be like the onward reward into the future right so this is like the the difference between the uh, uh standard backward direction dynamic programming and our forward direction variant of the dynamic programming which is just an inversion of the problem in terms of the time direction everything else is the same as you can see here like you can just uh, uh, uh mirror image these uh these you know graphs you know these dots and lines you'll get this right so there's nothing um uh inherently different it's just you know two different directions or ways or preference of uh, representing the same problem uh and, and i offered like a casual uh kind of like uh uh, metaphor, you know, to differentiate between this forward direction perspective and this backward direction perspective. So, uh, I guess in my mind, you know, uh, the standard backward direction uh, calculation uh, is like calculating your salary uh, in a works perspective, right? Um, because then the reward is calculated like the uh, the accumulated reward is calculated like as an onward reward so you're gonna you know, start looking at you know uh for example if you're just working you're gonna start looking uh at the day you retire like what's the maximum uh level that you can achieve uh on the day you retire maybe it's the company ceo uh or maybe you're just a technical track it's like a cto or uh you know tech lead or you know principal engineer something like that then um you basically travel backwards uh in time like okay what's the year before i retire what's the second year third year before i retire all the way down to your current you know work year here and then you're gonna see okay um how much money i can make uh at any year uh, on any year um uh in any like i guess job title or job position so this is like a work perspective calculating your income you're going to be calculating the maximum reward onward from the current state and time all the way to the day you retire right um so there's like a cap of how much money you can make uh just by looking at you know your current year uh and between your current year and then the year you you're going to retire maybe it's going to be 30 years 20 years 10 years you know depending on which uh, what age you're at or you know uh, how you project your retirement uh this is going to be how you calculate how much money you're going to you're going to be making uh in total uh from from today on to the day you retire right this is the work perspective of uh, uh dynamic programming and on the other hand if we calculate actually um the problem in the forward direction uh, you're going to be looking uh, at an investment problem uh, because because now the um, the the reward is 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 different. It's going to be like a rolling reward. It's going to be looking at all the money you have right now or uh, at any like position or role uh, or you know your current portfolio, and then you're going to just move your way forward and accumulate as much uh this is called an arc reward uh as much as you can along your way and then you know 
uh, and then you know until some certain time in the future, you're gonna calculate what's the maximum amount of money that I can make from today on with this, with the current asset uh, uh, until like uh, maybe the day you want yourself to retire. So this is like the investment perspective DP. Uh, they could be used to save the, solve the same problem, but these perspectives are just different, okay? Uh, and that is how I kind of like can best explain this. And there it is, guys. Um, now, the next thing I'm going to do is to actually implement uh, one of these variants. I think I'm going to implement, um, let's say, I think I'm going to implement um, the the forward uh, variant, right? And then um, and then see how it goes. All right. So now let's uh, go back to our problem. And apparently we don't have any submissions. Um, and uh, we're gonna just work on prototyping this. Now this is problem 309, and we want to build our dynamic programming mm, in the forward variant style, right? So what we do is uh, in dynamic programming, of course, there's going to be like a, uh, I guess, a, a for loop, right? For loop to, to just basically walk you from day zero all the way to day four, even, you know, day five or the, uh, the, 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 the end of day for day four. So we're definitely going to build a for loop here, right? For, uh, um, for P in prices, right? Um, yeah, paying prices. So the the reason why I wanted to iterate the the content of the uh, of the uh, the list instead of you know the index of the list is because you know look up uh, the content by indexing the list is going to cost time. Um, but I guess because we're doing recursive relationships, it's better to actually use index. So I'm going to stick with index now. Um, so for indexing, we need to first find what's the length of the uh, prices array, uh, and then we're going to now use a range function to to represent that. Now it's going to be in range n. So now each k is going to be an index uh, in the prices list. And what do we do? Well, if you look at this um, graph again, what we're doing is that on each day, you know, look at this recursive relationship. Uh, on each day, we're going to be calculating the uh, the arc reward uh, towards any possible future state, as well as the uh, the rolling reward in the past that we have so far, right? So we probably want to define the initial rolling values of uh, our of our three different states, right? So let's just define that as well in here. Uh, let's say our state zero for um, for our state uh, in empty, uh, one for our holding state, and two for our freezing frozen state, right? So, um, and do we need like a table to re to remember everything, right? This is like important because. We only need like a memory of one previous, uh, one previous uh, days, like um, uh, one previous days uh, maximum rolling reward uh, in order to move forward. So we don't need to remember, you know, the entire history. We just need to remember yesterday's history. Okay, um, right. Actually, now let's start something like here. This was our previous uh, idea and it was not so good uh, now our so problem 309 uh, with a forward DP variant uh, solution the first uh, thing I'm gonna write down is that uh, we do not need to remember all uh, um, right all um, like max rewards uh, for all history, all MR max reward for all history. We just need the most recent history, 
yeah, just literally yesterday, right? Like IE yesterday, that is. IE, that is yesterday. Um, and what is MR? Is uh, maximum uh, reward. Let's add a rolling there. Rolling maximum reward. Uh, let's call it RMR. Uh, rolling maximum reward uh, for all history. We just need the most recent history from yesterday. So this will make um, this will this makes the space complexity a pleasant what a pleasant um, O of one. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, so for our empty, so let's, yeah, what is um, um, RMR, right? Like RMR is um, uh, rolling maximum reward. Uh, we have, we will have make it like a, RMR is gonna be a list, right? Um, with three elements and it'll be, uh, let's see what should be that should be zero impossible impossible so let's make it zero none none is it possible um yeah yeah maybe it's possible let me let me just uh make it that way zero none none right and uh um moving on right moving on um for k in range n, we're gonna start on um, k equal to zero, which we already kind of like calculated, right? Uh, yeah. So let's actually start from k in range of one uh, one n. So we're gonna start on the second element, and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna apply now these iterative conditions uh, of this, right? Uh, we're going to see how many things we need to compare for the maximum? Well, for for um, for RMR one, right? RMR zero, which is the um, uh, you know uh, the yeah, which is the the reward, the the maximum reward, like right? the maximum cash history, uh, maximum. Um, rolling maximum reward well this is a little bit uh hard to say it and you know in one second rolling maximum reward okay or rmr yeah let's just call it reward okay um reward so the reward on 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 uh, day one is going to be uh um it's going to be r1 so it's going to be r1 Let's just call it R, you know, uh, R1, uh, R0, right, R0. We're just updating it. Uh, now this one is what, there's two ways to, uh, 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 yeah, there's two ways to try to calculate it. First is to use the value uh, from the previous, uh, previous, Actually, we should use our new, right? Yeah, this is a better way. Um, our new zero because you know we don't want to end up uh, modifying things um, uh, from from yesterday from history. Now our new zero is equal to the maximum between two things. Um, the first thing is um, continue to rest, so it's going to be the same R value from yesterday, uh, R0, right, R0. And the other one is, um, I guess, uh, the previous value of the frozen state. Yes, uh, yesterday's frozen value, uh, yeah. Yesterday's value, yesterday's frozen state value. Yeah, yesterday's frozen state value plus zero. So yesterday's frozen state value. Uh, so that would be R2. Yep. 
right that's it and uh um how about the next one the the value for the holding state well for the holding state um we could there are again two different ways one is we take um uh, the reward value of uh, yesterday's empty state value right and then we're going to minus the price of the stock yesterday right so max between r0 minus the price of uh, of yesterday so price k minus one uh, or we could continue to hold from a previous hold so we're going to take uh, the previous hold value uh, R1 yeah yep 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 uh, and the uh, R new 3 R new 2 you know what let me just uh, somehow initialize the R new uh, with, with something okay so that at least it'll have a memory there now r2 equals uh, the max between well actually r2 there's only one way to achieve uh, a frozen state that is you know take the holding state value from yesterday and uh, plus the sale value of uh, the stock price so we're gonna do there's no max it's just r from uh, yesterday's um, hold value and plus the the price yesterday k minus one yeah um, I would say we don't want to look up the list twice so I would rather just you know price equals to this uh, price yesterday right price yesterday I'm gonna just do that and then just gonna do that yeah price yesterday price yesterday right so now we updated uh, this what are you gonna do are you gonna say update uh, R yeah so R becomes the uh, our new uh, our yeah our new becomes the R but looking at it um did you think we really need like two lists R and R new to rotate this stuff um well the the new first element relied on the first and the third element right the new second element relied on the zeros and the first element the new second element relied on the first element so I guess what we can do to avoid doing that is to perform this first because at this point R1 hasn't been modified yet uh, and wait but then R2 would have been modified already we can't afford that so this r2 has to be before that but then r0 is modified so we had to put this before that now r1 relies on r0 which is not modified yet which is great uh, and uh, price yesterday r1 yeah you can't do that because this one relies on r1 okay anyway I give up I think I'll just keep two arrays of um, R and R, R new, R and R new, and we're gonna just you know do an update like that. All right, so I think this is all. This is everything really. Uh, and then after this for loop, we'll be looking at you know the the values on the last day, uh, and then we're just gonna do a clearing at once. You know, clear all remaining clear you know uh, um, clear the uh, uh, holding stock value 
on last day, right? So, of course, we're going to have like a, at the end of the day, we're going to have like an R array. At the end of the day, R becomes R new, so it's the same thing. Uh, so we're going to just uh, make R uh, 1, right? We're going to choose R as the, the, the array to work on is equal to R1 um, plus the um, the price value of, of you know, just uh, the last day, right? Yeah, minus one is going to be just, just, yeah, clear it at the last value there. And then we're going to have an R array. Basically, it's going to be like three different things. Uh, we're going to return. Return what max of uh, of R right? I think that's it. Um, I think that's uh, basically it. Let's see if it works. Okay. Um, right. Run it. Well, there's something. Uh, right. I had I had thought about this. So you cannot initialize them as none, basically. But so then, what should I initialize them as? If they cannot be none, basically we want these values to be never uh, like selected. If you want them to be never selected, you have to make them like very negative, right? Because we're maximizing. So if you make these X values like very negative, you'll make sure that they will never be selected. So what is the um, mag yeah, negative value you can get there? So the, the highest price you can get is like a thousand. So if we initialize these as like minus ten thousand, we'll be probably pretty sure that they will never be selected, right? Just it's an overkill. It's an overkill, but uh, let's see. Well, ah, this is again wrong. We are expecting three, right? Are we? Let's see. One, two, three, oh, two. We're expecting three. One, two, three, oh, three. One, two, three, oh, two. We're expecting three. Right, we're expecting three. Uh, but somehow we got a answer of uh, of four. So how is that happening? Um, let's just you know hand calculate this a little bit, okay? We take this array one two. You know what, actually, let's just uh, try it. one, two, three. We're all here. We're already here. So we can um, basically inspect the progression of the the R array at each step, right? We can we can do that, and we can basically debug uh, using that. So now let's put our debugger on. Uh, now we, you know, at the end of each, uh, at the end of each uh, for loop, we're going to just look at, you know, the R value. Right, right. So we're gonna do this. Oops, this. Yeah, we're here already. Good. All right. We're at this. Um, k equal to one. Right. So k equal to one. Uh, what what shall we expect? Um, so day one, we should expect it to be zero minus one and a very negative value there. Zero minus one and a very negative value there. So let's see. R new zero minus one and a very negative value. That's correct. So let's uh, just step again. Now k equal to two. We expect to see um, again zero zero minus one one zero minus one one. That's correct. And let's step again, and we expect to see one minus one two. Um, one minus one two. That's correct. So let's uh, move one step forward. We should be expecting two one minus one, and we have two two two. Okay, that's where it went wrong. It shouldn't be two two two. It should be so. Things went wrong when when k equal to what k equal to four. Right. So why would it go wrong when k equal to four? Let's see. When k equal to four, we're just basically going to calculate price yesterday, right? Price yesterday was zero, which uh, makes sense. Price yesterday was zero, and then for the um, 
for the um, yeah for the empty value it's going to take the maximum between 1 and uh, the frozen value from yesterday so if we just take a look at R you know that's basically yesterday's list wait wait hold on why is uh, R also 222 two, two? We shouldn't have updated R yet. Uh, okay, let's uh let, let's do this again, okay? We now know where to look at. Alright, let's put on the debugger again and uh, we're gonna stop on this line here, here. Well, I guess we have to restart the kernel. to make the debugger working again. Right, we put our pointer here. Right, you know, the fact that R new and R are like basically synced in instantly before I update them, that's, that's scary. That tells me something maybe is wrong about, you know, the memory location. Let me just uh, move forward now r is 0 and then 2 minus crazy values okay so they are actually different okay that's that's actually good news so when k equal to when k equal to 1 we're basically seeing like r and r new so r represents um, the initial thing like 0 minus minus right and r represents uh, the actual calculated value for day one which is zero minus one minus a lot um, right so z zero minus one minus a lot which is correct so the next step is where you know our r becomes zero minus one one why is that I mean the r here should be it should always like um, Um, I mean, why? I mean, R after the update, R should be what R new was previously, right? So when K equals to uh, now, K equals to 2, we shall see that, you know, R new has updated, but R is going to be whatever it was before. So 0 minus 1, like minus 9, 99, 90, minus. 9999 but here we're seeing that uh our r is 0 minus 1 1 but why is that this is quite strange you know like i didn't tell r to update at all oh maybe maybe this is not the right way to assign or to update the r's I mean, that's the only thing that I can think of that could be wrong, right? Like, this is not how you update R. If we do R and then R new, this maybe is how you assign it, right? So let's just uh, make a make an example. If so, for example, if P is equal to one, two, three, and then P new is equal to uh, you know four, five, six. And if you want to update p with p new just by saying p equals to p new, let's see what p is. Four, five, six. Okay. Hey, it does work. But w what if we say p this equals to p new of this? It's the same. That's a shame because. Now, hey, actually, now it works. So, I mean, this line did have some magic. I don't know why, but uh, now it actually works, which is crazy, you know. Um, I guess I need some Python memory and uh, list assignment knowledge uh, 
to to see what you know yeah let's just look it up don't python um assign a re, assign list to another list I'm signing one list to another how do you do it uh list one list two list two equal to list one Oh, so you see, this is like maybe when you change list two, list one has been changed as well. Right, this is like shallow copy or something. Oh, right, right, okay, 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 okay. To make a copy, right, okay. So I, I guess I was right. So, so this is actually now a... Um, a deep a deep copy okay this is a deep copy um, whereas r equal to r new is a shallow copy so what what are these things well if you don't know I previously had looked up you know the difference between deep copy and uh, shallow copy on another occasion so basically, a deep copy is a copy of the content of the variable, whereas a shallow copy is just copying the address of, of another variable. So if you just copy the address, um, um, it's like, it's like okay, uh, uh, okay. Um, how should I say this? If you just copy the address, let's say your parents live in Florida, okay? Uh, and uh, when when you you know uh, uh, register for your Amazon account and you just you know copy your parents' address and put it as your shipping address, then then whatever you order is going to be shipped to your parents' house, right? That's what I mean by saying copy. But if you actually you know instead of copy their address but copy the entire thing and place it in another place, that's like okay you basically buy another house but exact the same size and look of your parents house and this house is now in where michigan okay now in michigan and this is your house although you know everything in the house is the same this is a deep copy of the house instead of just the house address then you put this michigan address into your amazon account then you can actually receive your amazon packages in your very own Michigan house, which is exact, which look exactly the same as your parents' house, but it's on a different address. Does that make sense? All right. So in this case, we actually need, um, we actually need a new copy of um, of R, right? Because because yeah. So actually, um, because. R is the one that we will be returning in the end. We want this to uh, to always update. So R new is like our our temp our temp uh, our template temporary temporary variable, right? And you're always using R to actually wait. Okay. Actually, I just want to keep you know these two values at two different locations. Um, we don't want to point to, yeah, we don't want to point, we, we may not want to create a different address for R as well. We just want R to use the same address. But when, when we were updating R, we just want to use the content of uh, of R new. Yeah, that's that's all. I think that's uh, that's how you do it. And uh, right, that's right. And uh, let's submit this to, to the, to the, you yeah, know, to the solution here and see if it works right it's uh working for the first one what about the uh yep that works too so let's submit it accept it there we go all right so above average performance let's uh submit it a few times a couple of times still above average okay good another one still above average so all right we are confirmed that this is an above average uh solution and it's actually the dynamic programming solution. So 
Uh, yeah, this is uh, working pretty well, and we just implemented this DP in the forward direction. Uh, we could have implemented in the backward direction as well. Um, so, but I mean, it's not necessary. You can you can do this um, you can do this on your own uh, because because it's just gonna you know flip the um, recursive uh, relations and now you're working on the onward reward in the future instead of the rolling reward in the past and you're gonna build your for loop from the last index uh, which is now you know the first index anyway because you flipped your problem right um, uh, and then you know to the first index which is uh, in reality the last day in the uh, stock market so anyway uh, this is our today's submission um, so what we did, let me give you a summary, is that, you know, we, um, I learned from this uh, solution of dynamic programming uh, um, with state machine kind of offline, trying to digest what's going on in here. Uh, and, you know, the names and the diagrams in here was a little bit, you know, confusing to me. So I had to kind of like create my own graphics to figure out what's going on. So I used my own. I guess duplicate um, my own kind of like remake of that solution and then this is my solution uh, in both in forward direction and backward direction but we implemented the forward direction code uh, and also I made a comparison between what is the, the classical DP recursive um, equation in the backward um, fashion compared to what we have been using uh, in this particular problem, using a forward direction variant, uh, and there, although they're all the same, uh, you know, doing it in forward or, or doing it in the backward or forward just requires you to uh, inverse invert the uh, the direction of your time or your progress, uh, and then just reformulate the problem with the uh, inverted um, uh, time. And uh, I made an analogy saying that okay, the backward direction DP. Uh, is like calculating uh, your work salary towards you know the day you retire, whereas uh, the forward direction DP is looking at you know the rolling reward in the past up till now that you made so far, uh, and then looking forward see how much more you can gain so that you never know how much you how what's the maximum amount of money you can make until you actually uh, 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 recursively moved to the last day where, uh, where you work, uh, whereas in the backward direction, you kind of like know immediately what's the, you know, the, the maximum you can achieve by starting from the last day you work. Uh, and then you're just going to calculate backwards and then find out realistically um, mm, mm, uh, how much you can make from where you are at the status you are uh, on the day right today. So uh that's it that's it guys that's the uh, summary hope you liked uh, my graphics and my explanation and i will see you in our next video peace